Hello friends, I am going to discuss a problem from a good book, Pathfinder for the Olympiads and J Advanced. Let us see the problem first. Two identical balls, say A and B, are attached to the ends of a light rod. This is a smooth wall and it is a smooth floor. This rod system is released from the vertical position to slide between the wall and the floor. So that is uh, A might be giving a slight impulse in this direction, disturbed from the position, so that uh, the system starts sliding between the wall and the floor. The question is, when the upper ball leaves the wall, or about to leave the wall, what is the velocity of the lower ball? Let at some general instant, uh, rod is inclined at uh, theta with the horizontal before leaving the wall. Let us see the free body diagram for this ball, its own weight, mg is downward, normal force from the horizontal surface ny is upward. For this ball, weight again mg downward, normal force from the wall, nx in this direction. Also, the force in the rod acts on the both balls. What is the direction of this force? Let us see. How is this ball moving in the vertical direction? Because along the wall. So, as it is not moving in the curved path, its acceleration must be the direction of its motion, that is vertically downward. So, net force on it should also be vertically downward, or net force in the horizontal direction should be zero. But there is already a force Nx on this ball from the wall in the horizontal direction. So, it must be balanced by the component of the force given by the rod. We may call it a tension. So, a tension in the rod on this ball must be in this direction. So, that its component in this direction balances x. Now, you see this angle is also theta, alternate angle. In the horizontal direction, I am writing the equation for this ball as net force equal to 0. What do you write? Nx must be equal to T cos theta. Next, for this ball, what do you write? As it's, it is moving in the horizontal direction, its acceleration is horizontal. So, net force in the vertical direction is 0. That is, Ny in the component of T in the downward direction and mg all the three balance that is what the equation you see mg plus component of t in the downward direction is it is t cos t is t sin theta so t sin theta must be equal to n by now the question given is uh, at the time the ball leaves the ball that is nx is equal to 0. When nx is equal to 0, t must be 0. Because the ball is still in vertical motion. Even the moment, the position where the ball leaves the ball can be considered as a part of its vertical motion only, or it is a limit or boundary of the vertical motion. So its acceleration is downward. So net force in this direction is 0. Also, nx is 0. So, t must be 0. So, when nx is equal to 0, I can write tension the rod is 0. So, what is the acceleration of this ball now? The only force acting on the ball is its own weight mg. So, acceleration of this ball is uh, acceleration of b. This is g in the downward direction. Now come to this ball. In this direction anyway, net force is always zero. In the horizontal direction, the only force acting is compound the tension in this direction. That is T cos T. So because tension is zero, net force on the ball in the horizontal direction is zero, so its acceleration is also zero. So I can write acceleration of the ball A is 
t cos theta by m shall I write in this direction at cos is 0 as it is moving in this direction and in this direction at cos is the component of t only that is t cos theta by mos but as t equal to 0 at the given condition acceleration a is also 0 now in the frame of a how is b observed we see the distance between these two is constant so in the frame of a b moves in the circular path because it must be at a constant distance l from this one so the distance has to not change in this frame it must be moving in the circular path centered here and circle a radius l now, what the acceleration of this wall in this frame, that is, acceleration of B with respect to A, how much? Acceleration of B minus acceleration of E. Acceleration of A is anyway 0, so acceleration of B itself is the relative acceleration in the downward direction. Now, you see, as this wall is moving in the circular path in this frame, there must be two accelerations, tangential acceleration and radial or centripetal acceleration. So, resolving the net acceleration which is G, acceleration B is G, I have seen already. Now, resolve this G in this direction in this direction. I will get its two components, centripetal and tangential. So, what is this angle you see? The angle between these two angles theta. So, for this it is perpendicular, for this it is perpendicular. So, between that perpendicular is also same angle theta. So, component of G in this direction G cos theta and component of G in this direction is G sin theta can be considered as the centripetal or radial acceleration. Acceleration of B with respect to A, that radial component I am writing it is component of G in this direction is G sin theta. Radial acceleration we already know from our knowledge of circular motion as <coughs> R omega square. What is the radius in which it is rotating? This is the center. So L, length of the rod itself is the radius. So it is centripetal acceleration I can also write otherwise as L omega square where omega is the angular velocity. Now let us find this angular velocity in another way. I apply conservation of energy. You see the rod system from this portion is moving to this portion. So this particle is anyway moving the same horizontal level. Its potential is not changing, but its potential energy is decreasing as it is falling down. So decrease in the potential energy affects as the kinetic energy of the system. What a decrease in the potential energy you see, initially the ball is at a height L from the floor. Now the ball is at what height from the floor? L it is theta, this is L sin theta. So decrease in the potential energy of this ball I may write mg into falling height. L minus L sin theta is equal to increase in the kinetic energy. It is initially it is anyway zero. So the final kinetic energy itself is the change in the kinetic energy I am writing half I omega square. I is moment of inertia about axis of rotation. Now again, how to find the axis of rotation? You see, velocity of this ball is in this direction. Drawing perpendicular to this velocity, you will get one radius. And drawing perpendicular to this velocity, you will get another radius. The intersection of these two radii itself is the center of rotation about which the rod is rotating. Of course, at this instant only. Because as the rod is moving, the intersection of these two radii changes. This is the reason we call it instantaneous axis of rotation. This is the axis of rotation at this instant only. Now let us write the moment of inertia of this system about the axis of rotation. 
there are only two particles. So for the moment of arrangement of this particle, it is rotating at the distance. What is this distance? This L with this theta. So this is L cos theta. So moment of arrangement of this particle is of m into L cos theta whole square. Moment of arrangement of this particle. It is rotating at the distance. It is L sin theta. So moment of arrangement of this particle, I can write here. It's mass m into L sin theta half. I value is this one and uh, omega square. Now here, taking L common. mg l into 1 minus sin theta equal to how take ml square common here cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1 so you are left with just omega square now cancelling m and l either side you will get l omega square value as What is L omega square value you see? Send to this side 2j into 1 minus sin theta. Now this L omega square value you have already found as g sin theta in another way. So I am equating L omega square value g sin theta and 2j into 1 minus sin theta. From this you can solve for theta where the ball leaves the wall. So cancelling g and multiplying with the 2. 2 minus 2 sin theta equal to sin theta. So you get sin theta value as 2 by 3. Because 2 sin theta plus sin theta 3 sin theta is 2. Sin theta value 2 by 3. So you have got the angle theta as sin was 2 by 3 at which the ball leaves the wall. So the question is to find the velocity of the ball A. Let it be B. How do you find the velocity of the ball? I am writing simply R omega. Radius of rotation into angular velocity. What is the radius in which it is rotating at this instant or at any instant? L sin theta is the radius. What is omega value? From this equation, we can write omega value as take L this side, you will get omega value root g sin theta by L, is it not? So, this is now substitute the value of sin theta we derived already sin theta value 2 by 3, so now again sin theta value 2 by 3 g n by root L value L. So this is the value of the velocity of this ball when this ball is about to leave the wall or just to leave the wall. So friends, I am going to discuss another solution of the same problem in my next video.